Hey everyone, this is George Crows with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And uh, I love doing these solo ones, just kind of sharing some ideas, sharing some thoughts with you all. But um, as always, I want to check in, see how you're doing. I hope you're okay. Uh, I know personally, I had uh, not the best week, but, and I just want to share that because I think sometimes, um, and I'm going to talk more about this uh, later in the week. Sometimes, um, you know, people know me as a very positive person, but it's okay to say like, hey, you know, today sucked. Like this is a terrible week. And uh, yeah, I had a terrible week, but um, still here, still, you know, creating, still doing stuff. And I think, you know, we sometimes forget that we're growing through this entire process, but some days it's okay to say like, I don't feel like growing right now. I just need to get through today. Um, and I just want to share that because I think it's, it's good to hear that from others. Cause I know a lot of people are struggling right now and, you know, changing seasons, um, a lot of uncertainty in the world, but I just wanted to know, I, or I just want to let you know, I hope you're doing okay. Everyone that's listening and, and thank you for, you know, spending a little bit of your time with me, um, and to share some ideas with you. And so what I'm going to talk about today and, uh, what I'm going to talk about is just kind of this idea of like how we create learning for ourselves and how important that is. And this is actually sparked. Um, I, I was reading a comment in a Google form and it was after a session that I just had uh, delivered and it was something along the lines of, and I can't remember the specific subject area, or the specific topic. It was like, well, how do these ideas actually, you know, connect to math? And I'll be honest with you, those comments, I always, think about them. I'm like, well, I'm not the expert in math. That's what you are. So how do you, how do you see these ideas connecting to math or to language arts or to grade two or to kindergarten? Right. And I think it's really about how we kind of share, you know, kind of, you know, create our own connections to learning. I think that's so valuable in, in the work that we actually do. And, and I totally understand, like, when we go to professional development, our hope is often like, hey, I want ideas specifically to exactly what I teach and to exactly what I do. And there's times where that happens. And it's great. We can take those ideas, remix them, reshare them, and create something really powerful. But most of the time, it's not going to be directed to you specifically, right? Or professional learning might not be that great or whatever. So, so what do we do then? And what happens at that time? And I always think about like, how do I create my own learning through the situation? And there's a, um, a quote that I shared in the Innovator's Mindset by uh, Stephen Downs. And I, I, it was one of my favorite quotes on education ever. He said, we need to move beyond the idea that an education is something that is provided for us and toward the idea that an education is something that we create for ourselves. And I've always kind of connected with that and thought that was a really, um, really powerful example of what we need to do. And so kind of embracing that mindset, that, that innovator's mindset that I talk about, obviously, so often is anytime that I go to any professional lear learning opportunity, what I'm actually looking for is how do I create those connections? Oh, like, how does this one thing matter to me? And I know that like I attend a lot of professional learning uh, as someone who delivers professional learning opportunities. I always want to see what other people are doing, what they're sharing. And sometimes what I'll do, I'll sit in the keynote and listen to someone speak or listen to someone, you know, share some ideas. And 15 minutes in, I might actually not listen to the keynote anymore. And it's not because I'm not learning in that time but they might've said something that I'm like, Hey, now I need to blog about that. Like I need to blog and share some ideas there because I need to really dig deep and I need to make my own personal connections and make this meaningful to me. And I think that's something that I'm really passionate about is how we look for those connections and understanding. And really when someone provides information, uh, ideas, it doesn't really become learning until I actually make my own personal connections and a deep understanding. And I actually take away and create my own conclusions. And this is one of the skills I talk about as a characteristics of the innovator's mindset. And it's the idea of being like observant. And this is a, a quote uh, from the innovators of the box. That I'm just going to read to you uh, as more and more information is thrown our way and the noise becomes louder, the ability to slow down, listen, find great information, 
and make deep connections is becoming much more essential. For example, if you are new to a social media platform, finding relevant and meaningful information feels a lot like trying to find a needle in a haystack. It seems impossible and overwhelming. The skill of finding nuggets of wisdom and powerful links to information is one that you develop over time. And it's a skill that directly relates to two of the 21st century literacies as presented by the National Council of Teachers of English. And those are manage, analyze, and synthesize multiple streams of simultaneous information, create, critique, analyze, and evaluate multimedia text. In short, these literacies rely on our and our students' ability to be observant of the right information, not all information. Being observant requires critical thinking as we decide and decipher what to listen to. And I think it goes beyond the idea of what we listen to, but what we actually take away, what we create um, from those ideas and, and what we share. And I learned a skill, I, I, well, I shouldn't say I learned this skill at this time, but I really became aware of this skill when I was a basketball referee. And so for years, um, I refereed basketball, but before then I played basketball, obviously I coached basketball and I love the game. I've always loved the game and really something I've always resonated with. And I think about some of the skills I learned from being a referee and actually how they applied to what I did in uh, leadership as an administrator, how they applied to teaching and learning. And, and I'll just give you one. So in my time as, um, you know, someone who's loved basketball, I've watched thousands of games. One of my favorite things right now uh, is watching The Last Dance, Michael Jordan. I look forward to it, kind of watching it and, uh, and really digging deep. And it's kind of like reliving my childhood. And it's, it's really neat to see. So I've watched thousands and thousands of games. But when I became a referee, I wanted to be a really good referee. And what I noticed is when I started w watching those same basketball games I'd watched forever, I wasn't actually watching the game anymore. I was watching the referees. I was watching what they were doing, how they were, you know, talking to other people, how they were making calls. And I noticed that I, I kind of blocked out parts of the game that I always watched and really focused on the referees. And one of the things that I connected to, and it really made me think, was even the time where it wasn't maybe the best referee. And I'm sure, I'm sure anyone that's watched sports, you've seen that or noticed that. And I think a lot of times we, in, in sporting events, we notice uh, a referee when they're not great more than we notice one that is great. Usually one that is great, we don't pay attention to because they don't make anything, you know, make any calls that, you know, get people mad or upset. And so when, even when I watch, you know, someone that was maybe inexperienced, and, uh, you know, was kind of still developing, obviously, their skills, and we always develop our skills, but really early in that process, I would actually learn from that as well. I would learn, okay, like, oh, hey, there's something, you know, I, I might, I may not do, or hey, there's something that I might do it this way. And so any time that you watch a ref to, to think like, hey, well, this one's not good, what am I going to learn from them, right, is the same, of, same idea of like, I go to a PD and say, well, this is not great, what am I going to learn from this? Even in those times where things are not great, there's things I can learn. There's things I can pick up and there's things I can create. But I also noticed that when I started really getting interested in, re in becoming a, um, you know, a referee in basketball, I would actually watch ref in, refs in hockey, in football. And even though the sport was different, even though you know, the, the skill level and the, the way that they you know, went um, up and down the ice versus up and down the court, it wasn't the same, but I could still learn. And so I started looking for those things um, to become better. And so what I did is that even like, the, even that story that I just shared with you, taking something that I learned as a basketball referee, and now I'm applying it to education, that skill that I developed, you know, as I was refereeing, I, you know, would watch professional learning, I would attend these things. And even times where I thought, okay, maybe this isn't, you know, the best PD opportunity, but how am I creating connections? What am I taking away from this? And really looking at how this, you know, makes me better and making my own connections was so crucial. And it's a skill that we actually want to develop in ourselves because ultimately we want to develop this in our kids. And right now, 
our kids are learning these skills, um, whether we like it or not, how they deal with different things, how they apply, how they make their own learning, how they connect, because a lot of times they're on their own. They can't necessarily attend all of our sessions that we're providing or whatever. The ability for kids to be able to learn on their own is something that's more important than ever. And my friend, Katie Martin, she shares and posts. And if you don't follow Katie Martin or you don't read her blog, I definitely suggest it. She's an incredible writer, incredible thinker. I love her stuff. But she wrote a blog post written, uh, it was titled, Why a Sense of Purpose Matters More Than Ever for Remote Learning. And I just a quote she shared from the blog that really connected and made me think. She shared that as we emerge on the other side of this crisis, Although there may be gaps in content knowledge and skill, skills, I will be content knowing that my kids are more resilient and they understand that life is unpredictable, but have skills to navigate and cope when things don't turn out as expected. The ability to learn is the most important thing a teacher can provide for a kid. Yes, we share ideas. You know, we share content. We share, you know, inspiring things every single day in our classrooms and, and Teachers are nece more necessary than ever. But it's the idea of that, how do we develop the kids so they don't need us, that they can kind of connect that learning. And we have to kind of model that themselves. And so really something I believe is that great educators, like at all levels, can provide those ideas and inspiration. But that ability to, to develop learners is so crucial. And so as you're thinking about this, what are some of the ways that you create your own learning even when conditions aren't necessary. How do you actually connect and share? One of the ways that I do it, to be honest with you, is through this right now. Just, you know, not having necessarily a script. I have some obviously ideas jotted down and I'm going to share this blog and taking that reflection is that when I do this process, this is partly to share my learning, but it's partly to learn is to learn through writing learn through talking and try to make those connections and conversation and so long term learning is so much more powerful when we can create it for ourselves and that's something we need to instill in the work we do as educators but more importantly obviously that we instill this ability to learn create those connections um, in our students because it's something that's going to last forever and it's more important now than ever so thank you for taking the time to listen. I hope you have an incredible day. Thank you for all you do, and I hope you're well. Take care.